Hi, my name is Ryan James Heine, I'm a student at the University of Aberdeen, and today I'm going to show you uh, a disabled student's guide to getting around the University of Aberdeen. So if you'd like to follow me, and we'll take a, a guide around, a tour around campus. So obviously, this is the most historic, the oldest part of the campus, and probably the most recognisable. Um, but for a lot of disabled students with uh, motivability issues, it's a real problem. First being, the cobbles are an absolute nightmare to go across because they're so bumpy, and I've lost so many screws uh, going along the cobbles to Starbucks, which is just over there. Um, so, but the, the real problem with high street itself, apart from the cobbles, is the thin pavements, as you can see on this pavement as well. This pavement is one of the thicker pavements, but up there, the pavements get thinner and thinner to the point where you can barely use them. We'll go around to other buildings on the other side of campus that I use more regularly, that are a bit more easier to get to. Um, so, this building is New Kings, um, and when I was a second year last year, I used this building quite a lot. They both have ramps, as you can see, and they're both automatic doors, which are good. There is a lift, but it isn't a fireproof lift, and there is no evac chair. So, it's not definitely the worst building for accessibility that the university has to offer, but it isn't the best. Um, like I say, the classrooms are small, the, the lecture halls are pretty small, so, you know, it's a bit, it's a bit better than, say, some other ones I've been in, but it's not the best. Um, but yeah, boy, this is New Kings, and when you get into smaller courses, you'll probably use this building quite a lot. So, when I was in second year, I was mostly in this building in McRobert, which we'll come to later um, for lectures and things. But yeah, that's pretty much just been my experience of it. But yeah, um, we'll see if we can take it to our next location which I believe will be the Robert building and I'll show you how I get there which is the building I probably use the most for study and for lectures and for tutorials So this is the McRobert building, um, realistically as a student, and as probably as a disabled student, or as any student really, um, you'll use this building the most. Pretty accessible building overall, I would say, with regarding to the lifts and the on-site accessible toilet, um, which is probably the biggest at this side of the campus. So yeah, this is probably the building you'll see probably use it more, a lot more as you go in, into your, well, as you go further into your university education, is this is the building you'll see the most, um, and you'll be in the most, as it's got ideal study spaces as well, which have up and down desks. So yeah, I do quite like this building, even if it isn't the most aesthetic building on the outside, and it isn't as good looking as King's College or New King's, but it's definitely practical in use and it's um, really easily accessible all around the campus to get to. So this is the, what we call, what is called the staff lift. Um, I think that's pretty pointless for a separate lift for staff. I don't know what the reason is. Um, like I said, in second year I think we got access to lift because if you see here, um, it says student and stairs lift uh, straight ahead, but the doors can be quite heavy, both going in and going out, and when you get up the stairs, as I'll show you, um, you have to navigate more doors if you use the student lift, whereas the staff lift cuts all that out problems, 
So I asked him support if I could get access to the staff which which I did in second year, which was so much handier more handier than going through this uh, student lift because everyone used student lifts as well, so it means I'd be late to tutorials because everyone would be using a lift and I'd never get a lift. Whereas this one I know I'll get a lift and it's straight in, straight out. So I'm gonna take you to some classrooms that I use and show you what they're like and what I personally think of them. Um, the top classrooms can be quite small. Uh, depends on the way they're set out and how the lecture likes them to be set out. And the desk can be quite hard to get into, but I'm going to take you to a computer room which does have a special adapted desk. Um, so off we go. Wait, this is what it's like. It's quite spacious. Um, of course, you need to do a bit of moving, moving chairs and things. Um, but, well, you know, typically, uh, I've gotten used to it over the years. Um, so, for a while, and I don't know where the signs are now, they were clipped on, but a lot of people would attach their bikes to this ramp. And as you can imagine, the ramp is already narrow enough as it is, so imagine a bike being there. Um, so the university did put up signs saying don't put your bikes here. You can even see the cable ties where the signs were. I don't know where the signs have gone, but um, a lot of people do that, they do it on the high street as well, like they put their bikes on the side of these very narrow pavements. For whatever reason, because the bike racks are right there, That became a major issue for me, and then they had to sign up saying don't park your bike here, um, put it in bike racks, and that's what I would say to every but person who uses a bike, try and use the bike racks as much as possible, and, and if you can't, try and put them somewhere where they're not on a ramp, or somewhere that will hinder somebody's accessories. Um, but behind us, we have the William Guild building, uh, which contains the Arts Flex, Arts Flex the Theatre. Certainly, as you can see, there's not really any signage. There's signage for buildings, but there's not really any signage to any accessible way around to this building. You don't know where the accessible point of this building, where the accessible entrance of this building is. So we were thinking, we were like find, looking for ages where we could get into this building. But didn't contain stairs because there's stairs everywhere. So I'm gonna show you how I get to this from Robert. How we get from Robert to the Archway to Theatre. This is the entrance to the accessible door. Um. I didn't know this when I first came and tried this door, I tried to come into this door and almost fell down most steps there. Because didn't, this, this isn't, this, yeah, as you see there's no signage to see um, the, what this door is for. So this lecture theatre in particular was the lecture theatre I was in the most in first year and as the classes are bigger. This is what they use. Um. So this is where the accessible bit is, and the good thing about this lecture theatre is that you can have your friends sit next to you and you're with your peers. Obviously there's chairs here right now, but when I was here, I would sit here and my friends could sit next to me. And this is one of the only lecture theatres that allows you to actually do that with an actual desk in. And it does do great um, things because you feel more included. Um, you feel more engaged in a lecture, you know, you can talk to your friends next year. So this is the library. Um, like I said, you'll probably find yourself here a lot. You'll get uh, your books here, you'll get a lot of study spaces here. You can book study spaces. Um, there's four lifts, so there's three main lifts. Um, and then there's an extra fire safe lift. There's also, uh, well, to get in the library you need to go through the gates. But there is a wider gate for you to use. So upstairs there are a number of up and down, well adjustable desks, not up and down desks, adjustable desks. We now have 
a dedicated reading area for, well, a dedicated area for these tables to roll. There's a lot of disabled toilets on every floor um, of the library, but there is really one special secret toilet that you can get access to if you ask for disability services. It's an automatic door, but in here um, is what we call a Cosimat toilet. Now this is a very special toilet as it washes and dries for you. At the university there are multiple people that can help you if you have a disability. Um, so there's the student sport team which are based in the hub or the union building. In the disability team you will get a dedicated advisor to you who will be your sort of point of contact. You can email at any point with any um, issues that you have. I email them quite regularly. Um, and when you come to uni, they normally ask you for a form and they get in contact with you straight away as soon as you apply and you flag up on your application that you have a disability and you discuss your needs and whatnot. And that can be anything from accommodation to exam arrangements to timetabling. With you, the security team are also on hand to help. Um, there's the safe zone app and if they know your disabilities they will come and help you as it's GPS located. Like I said I've been stuck in that bathroom before and I've just used the safe zone app. And the security team will come and got me, they will also come and get you if there's a fire alarm. So there's lots of different people on campus that help you. Um, and there's a lot of ways to get help um, and uh, you'll get a, try of, uh, a personal evacuation plan uh, every year and every semester. Uh, the accommodation team will make sure that you get the accommodation that you need. So that is the sort of staff based support you can get. The personal tutor will also, Paul will, will also help you, not Paul, they will, they will help you um, and direct you to the direct teams you need. We also have a disabled students forum, which I am part of. I am the li liaison officer for the forum and we host a range of events and campaigns. Um, we're doing a lot for Disability History Month, which is this month, including this video. Um, we've done a podcast, we're doing a podcast, um, and we are recently doing a campaign on adaptive housing for students and encouraging the university to in include more adaptive housing and give uh, disabled students more agency and where they want to live. So um, you can check us out on Facebook, or on Twitter, or on Instagram. And we're always there to sort of advocate for disabled students. There, are, there is a range of support at the uni, so you're never really alone in whatever you're going through with if with your disabled student. Um, I, you know, from today's, you know, you'll see my life is going around uni can be quite tough, but I always know that I have support and that people to turn to when it does get tough. Um, so you know, I've got like things like I get extensions and I get um, allowance for. Poor, uh, poor attendance and all those things can be arranged through the disability team. So you've got a range of support around to help you and people to guide you so that you're not alone, you're not isolated and people just generally on campus, whether we're support staff or not, will just help you. If you need a door open, you know, nine times out of ten students do just open the door. You will find people that are willing to get, lend a hand at any time at any point. Which is the, probably one of the most amazing parts about the uni is the sort of community feel that we're finally getting there. We've got, we've started and we've still got a long way to go, but we are getting there and we're making progress as a form and I think as a uni, you know, the support service that's been missing too. So yeah, that's, that's it really. So I hope you all enjoyed that video of how to get around the University of Aberdeen campus as a disabled student and I hope this um, has opened your eyes a wee bit on what it's like to get around 